Hello team, uh, welcome back. In this video we're going to be looking at polynomials of higher degree than 3. Um, so effectively, for the with respect to the year 12 methods course, we're just going to look at quartics. So polynomial with a to degree 4, um, which essentially means we have an x to the power of 4, somewhere in there. Um, all the trends that we've looked at back in quadratics and in cubics carry on here, okay? The most basic, basic form of a quartic is um, this y equals x to the 4, or f of x equals x to the 4, and it's just like a quadratic, but it's a bit flattened out, okay? It's a bit flatter across here. A quadratic would come in and um, be a bit more like that, so it's just flattened out um, more between uh, x equals negative 1 all the way over to 1 and then it really ramps up really quickly because of course it is um, x to the power of 4 so 2 to the power of 4 gets big real quick um, so there's that one then as we get add more and more terms into it like this one x to the power of 4 minus x squared we get this sort of w shape and I guess that would be the standard what we'd consider for a positive quartic is some form of W shape like that. And these two don't have to be at the same height. They can um, be different depending on how it's formed. But generally quartic gives us some form of W shape. Uh, as always, our y-intercept is determined by any C value on the end. So again, here there's no C value, there's no constant value on the end um, so that helps us when it's written in polynomial form like this that helps us identify our y-intercept. Now if we look at factorized forms there's two things to note just like a quadratic or a cubic if um, the factor is repeated then that means the intercept is also a turning point. So any factor tells us our intercepts, okay, that tells us an intercept, that tells us an intercept, but if it's repeated because the, the factor squared, well, that means that intercept is also a turning point, and same over here, this one is repeated, oh, there, the numbers actually match up opposite way around, but you can see that both the intercepts in this case are repeated, therefore they must also both be turning points. Um, like a cubic with a quartic, we can get a factor that is actually repeated three times. Okay, it's a triple repeat. That means that intercept, okay, again, this is an intercept, this is an intercept. This intercept is also a point of inflection that looks like a cubic. Okay, you can imagine this section of it coming down here, point of inflection coming like that. Okay, that's very similar to a cubic with a, uh, quadratic sort of tacked onto the side of it. Um, so there's the things to note. If our intercept is repeated twice, or well, to the power of two, it's a turning point. If it's to the power of three, that intercept is also a point of inflection. Um, yeah, that's the main things to note. So let's get into it. Um, a lot of the questions, and you can even see in the textbook, a lot of the questions there's some tricks to factorizing them, trying to recognize certain patterns, especially if there is a to the power of four, uh, there's no to the power of three, and then there's a squared, and then there's just a constant. So there's no x cubed, and there's no um, x. There's some certain patterns we can recognize, and you'll see more of them in the textbook, but we'll look at this one to get going. Looking at 9x to the power of four minus 30x squared plus 25, you should, Note that we can actually write it as 3x squared, all squared, and the 30 we can break down to 2 times 3 um, times 5, and then also the 25 we can break it down as 5 squared. Now, why is this important? Well, this is actually, we could think of it as if 3x squared is a, and also 5 is b, okay? We've now written this as a squared minus 2 by a by b plus b squared. 
it is the first term squared, the last term squared, and those two terms combined multiplied by 2. Now, if you're thinking, I think I've seen this before, this a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, well, that's the expansion of if we had a minus b bracket a plus b, that automatically expands into a squared minus 2ab. Oh, hold on. No, that one cancels out. Uh, it needs to be like this. Sorry, a minus b, a minus b, that expands out into a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Or you could also write this as a minus b all squared. So it's recognizing that quadratic expansion or quadratic factorization and applying it to the quartic. So going from there, we've said 3x squared is our a and b is our 5. That means this factorization I should be able to write. 3x squared minus my b, which is the 5, and all of that is squared. Mm -hmm. uh, so we get to that. Now we can also, this 3x squared minus 5, we can try and turn this into inside the brackets. I'm looking inside the brackets now. I could try and turn that into a difference of perfect square. So I could write that as bracket square root 3x all squared minus the square root of 5 all squared and then that whole thing squared but now inside the brackets I've got square root of 3 x square root of 3 by x all squared take away something else all squared so that's the difference of perfect squares so I can break this down as root 3x minus 5 bracket root 3x plus 5 being a difference of perfect squares and then all of that is squared um, so we've got some repeated roots going on in here. So now that we've done that, we, we should be able to get our intercepts and turning points. Turning points are going to be a little bit of a pain, but we'll get there. Um, actually, no, they're not because we've got repeated roots. So I could finally expand all this out squared by squared. I get root three x minus 5 bracket root 3x plus 5 and then the same thing because it's multiplying by itself 3x minus 5 bracket root 3x plus 5 come up here I can write this as root 3x minus 5 all squared bracket root 3x plus 5 all squared I have two roots that I have my two intercepts. I can let root 3 by x minus 5 equal to 0, and I can also do root 3x plus 5 equal to 0 um, because I'm using the null factor law. So I get x is equal to 5 on root 3, and I also get x is equal to negative 5 on root 3. and because both these factors were repeated factors, that also means that is where the turning points are as well. Uh, the last thing we have left to find is our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is we let x equal to 0, and if we look back at our original one, all of that just turns to 0, so we're left with the constant, so y is equal to 25. So I ha haven't written out, I'd want to make this clear and stated in coordinate form, okay? But that is an intercept and a turning point. That is an intercept and a turning point, and y equals 25 is an intercept. Um, now, you could have, instead of using this recognition over here at the left, instead of using that, you could have tried to use the remainder theorem or the factor theorem, but you would note you would have ended up having to guess um, root five, uh, 5 on root 3. So, a pretty difficult one to try and guess. But that's how you go about that problem. Right here, 
For the rest of the problems, it's just applying our idea of transformations that we've applied to cubics, we've applied to square root graphs, we've applied to hyperbolas, truncus, all the same stuff because it's still a polynomial, it all still applies. Um, so the graph of y equals negative x to the power of 4 plus 8x or squared minus 7 is shown below. That's over here on the right. Over the next three slides, I want you to sketch the following graphs by applying the suitable transformation. So it's by recognition, seeing what, what how has the function has changed. We've started with, uh, I guess, our master, okay, our original function, and then we've changed it to something else. What's the change that's been made? In this case, it's really easy to see that x has been replaced with um, x plus two. So if we can see that replacement, then it's quite easy to see that that is a translate two units in the negative x-axis direction. No, oh, it's not spelt negative right at all. Um, two units in the negative x-axis direction. Oh my. Okay, so it's just moving everything across two. So that one was at negative one comma zero. So that's going to be over at uh, negative three. Let's check the scale. Root seven. Root seven is roughly equal to. It's between four and nine. So that must mean it's. Two point something, two point something something. So two point something something plus the two. That's actually going to be over here if we use the consistent scale. But that's all right. This one comma. So I've moved that one. I've moved that one. That will be. This will be negative three comma zero. This one here will be. Negative two minus root seven comma zero. Uh, one comma zero gets moved across two, so that's now at negative one comma zero. Uh, the root seven take the two. It's roughly two point something, so that's going to be in about there. That's going to be root seven take away two comma zero. And the zero seven that will now be across at negative two seven. We'll keep that scale the same. Put that there. That's negative two comma seven. And it's just plain connect the dots. Okay. Going to come up. Oh, not the best. Again, apologies using the graphics tablet. I've drawn that one too far across. Two point something, take another two, that would be four point something. So that should be about there. Go. That's a bit better. Down. Down. Okay, there we go. So it's just recognizing that it was everything moved across negative two. So let's have a go at the next one. We've got y equals negative half. So our original function over here, we can see that every coefficient now has been divided by two, divided by two, divided by two. Okay, so how how does that occur if we're thinking of replacements? Well, that would that's not replacing um, x with x on two. That wouldn't work because that would be inside the um, that'd be inside the square and the cube. Oh, sorry, inside the square and the quartic. Um, and then it also wouldn't have applied to the constant. So it's not that replacement. What it actually is, is replacing, okay, to, to apply to every term on the right, it would actually be replacing the y with 2y. Now we want to think of dilations as 
some number in the denominator, so that's actually the same as y with y on half. And then if you applied that, multiplied the half over to the right hand side, that is effectively dividing everything by 2. So if we've replaced y with y on 2, y, sorry, if we've replaced y with y on a half, that means we have dilated from the x axis by factor of half. So that means we're squishing uh, from the x axis, we're squishing from the x axis, we're actually halving everything. So everything's going to be in the same spot for the intercept wise. Zero and negative root seven zero. Okay, so all the x intercepts are stay the same, but the actual turning points are squished in by a factor of half. So instead of being at negative seven, that's going to be negative seven on two, so that's about three and a half. And if we kept the scale, that would be about there. So that's going to be. 0, comma, negative 7 on 2. We don't know the actual coordinates of these turning points, but if we keep our scale consistent, we want to come to halfway, which is about there. Same over this side. So our graph comes up and is the same, just squished in. arrows on the end. There we go. Did I do that on this one? No, I didn't. I need to have the arrows to show that it's a continuous function. Okay, so we have that. Um, the only tricky one about this was recognizing what is the transformation. How do we get everything halved, um, including the constant? Well, that's actually you need to affect the y on the left-hand side. And then once you bring it over, it's going to affect every term on the right-hand side. This last one, the negative x to the power of 4 is the same, the 8x squared is the same, it's now just a minus 4 instead of minus 7. So the y-intercept instead of being at negative 7 is at negative 4, that means everything. This is a translation, vertical translation, by doing replace y with, um, that would be y minus 3. So that means we have translated three units in the positive y axis direction. Okay. So that's just move everything up three, and depending on what the scale you want to use, so negative seven, that'll be now going to be negative four. I'm going to say that's negative four. The one that's going to be up here, so that's negative four comma oh no, that's zero comma negative four up here. That is now one comma three. This over here is now root seven comma three, and the same occurs pretty much everywhere, and that's going to be. Turning point way up there. Seven, three. And we can put our graph in. So it might not look like it's quite moved up three units because of the vertical scale I chose is a little different to what it was previously. Um, but you get the idea, everything has just moved up three. Rightio, so before we look at that one, um, that's an idea looking at some cortics. It's just like every other polynomial we've dealt with before. So, same skills apply. Right, so VCAR 2019, exam one, question 8a. So this is exam one, that means it is tech free. So there's a graph, 
Okay, the function f applies polynomial function degree 4. Clearly that we can see there, part of the graph of f is shown. The graph touches the x-axis at the origin. That's really handy to know. Okay. So that is 0, 0. Find the rule of f. Okay, so what can we get out of this? We know it's going to be a quartic. We're told it's degree 4. So there's a heap of different ways we could write that. We could write as x uh, a x to the power of 4 plus b x to the power of 3 plus c x squared plus d x plus e um, as a general polynomial. We do have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bits of information about the function, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we could sub in all five of those individually, get five equations, and solve a five simultaneous equation problem but it's a one mark. And the time is going because I'm explaining how to do this problem, but it's literally a one mark question. So you've got 90 seconds to do this. So clearly it's not going to be solving five simultaneous equations. What else can we note? Well, we have some intercepts. So we could write this also as like an X minus E for one of the intercepts, X minus F for another one of the intercepts. And we have this intercept in the middle, so we could write that as x, x minus g. And this g, because it's at zero, that's also zero. And, and this is what, the way you would want to go about it, that is also a turning point. It is an intercept and a turning point, so that must mean it is repeated. The only thing left missing is we still need to know the a number out the front. Okay. The y is going to be equal to all of that and we can sub in the values. So we get y is equal to a straight away first intercept is x it's at negative one so we can write plus one. This one over at the right hand side that is at x minus one. And then we have our repeated one which is x plus zero all squared. So we can now write this as y equals a x actually I'll show you plus x plus one x minus one. Uh, x squared as the zero disappears. So we could then write it as y equals a x squared x plus one x minus one. We're almost there, we need to figure out what the a is. So we now need to sub in one of these points to figure out what a is. Um, you can choose the right hand one or the left hand one, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to sub in the right hand one because it's all positive. So I get 1 is equal to a bracket, oh no, left the 1 on root 2 all squared bracket 1 on root 2 plus 1 bracket 2 minus 1. Okay. Uh, from here, you could then, you could, again, it's not the best way to do it, especially being a one mark question, you could turn this first bracket, uh, sorry, this middle bracket here, you could turn that into 1 on root 2 plus 2 on, sorry, root 2 on root 2 for the 1, and you could then write that as 1 plus root 2 on root 2, and same over with this right hand one, you could do the same thing and you end up with 1 minus root 2 on root 2. You could then multiply them together, um, multiply the two fractions together. Um, the denominators will change to 2. You could do the numerators, um, do the operations, and you'll see a whole bunch of it cancels out. What you could also recognize is we have, and this is the quicker way, we have back here x plus 1, x minus 1 which you also know would is the expanded form of uh, uh, blank here one second. If we have a minus b, a plus b, that is actually the expanded form of a squared minus b squared. No, sorry, factorized form. You have that. You could work that way, you can end up factorizing it. Otherwise, 
you can also come back the other way. So that's really handy that you could, 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 could write this as y equals ax squared um, x squared minus 1 squared there. Okay, And we can also apply it over here. It's still the same thing. It's something plus the first bit plus the second bit, the first bit minus the second bit, and the first bit and the second bit are exactly the same. So again, I can write this as 1 equals a 1 on root 2 all squared. I'm just going to square the first bit. So I've got 1 on root 2 all squared minus 1 all squared. And I start simplifying. The root 2 on the bottom just turns into half. Same over here. This turns into half take away 1. So we get 1 is equal to a by half by half take away 1 is just now negative half. Multiply those together, you get 1 is equal to negative 1 fourth a, and finally you get a is equal to uh, negative 4. So you would then, I've used up some space writing up in a time thing here, but you would have to then finally write what the actual function is. It's asking to find the rule, so you have to write it out in full what your function is. It makes sense that a is negative. Okay, thinking of it, it's sitting at the front here. It's the um, quartic. It's flipped upside down. It's not a W. It's an M shape. So A does actually need to be negative. Um, so that's how you do that one. That's a lot of explanation. That was probably quite a good five minutes to explain how to do a 90 second problem. To do this in 90 seconds, I think is actually really challenging. Uh, I would suggest this is one of the problems where you're not quite getting your value for marks or value for time. But if you at least recognize writing it in this intercept form, first intercept, second intercept, repeated intercept, which is the turning point at the origin, then you're going to get 90% of the way there. But again, it's a one mark question. Either you have to get it all right or you get none of it right. There's no half marks in the exam. That's it for exercise 4F. Um, the questions that you need to do, if we go right back to the start of the slides, okay, for 4F, uh, all of them, which I think is pretty good practice. This is probably the first time you've ever dealt with quartics, um, so more practice the better. If you have questions, feel free to put them on Google Classroom or in the comments below in this video.